What's going on guys, Sean Nalawani, seannell.com. And in today's video, I wanna talk uh, a bit about the subject of cardio and uh, whether or not you should avoid cardio because it's gonna interfere with muscle growth and decrease your gains. Uh, this is something that you'll hear pretty often uh, with people saying that cardio interferes with weight training adaptations and that it has no benefit beyond lifting weights whatsoever and is a complete waste of time. Uh, but like most things, it's really not a black and white issue of cardio either being good or bad and that you should either you know, do tons of cardio or avoid it altogether. And instead the answer lies uh, sort of on a bell curve where performing some cardio is fine and will give you certain benefits. But if you start performing too much, then you'll likely start seeing negative effects on muscle growth and strength gains. So if you go overboard on cardio while you're trying to focus on building muscle, the main downside is the simple fact that you're just introducing another stressor to your body, uh, particularly if you're doing uh, higher intensity interval style training. Remember that muscle growth happens while you're out of the gym resting and that the more effectively you can recover in between workouts, the more volume and the more frequency you can apply to a given muscle and the faster uh, you'll make gains overall. But if you're performing a lot of additional cardio during the week, then you're creating more muscle damage that's gonna require more time and recovery resources to repair. Uh, you're also creating more central nervous system stress, again, particularly with the, uh, the high intensity interval style. And you're also putting your joints under more stress as well. And then aside from the recovery aspect after weight training, you could also be impacting actual weight training performance uh, if you're doing a lot of cardio during the week in close proximity to your workouts. So, uh, you know, something like treadmill sprints or uh, a long duration session on a Stairmaster, that could affect performance on your leg workouts. Uh, or if you were doing, you know, uh, bag work, that could affect upper body pushing movements. Uh, rowing cardio exercises could affect your back movements. Uh, or if you're doing things like barbell complexes or kettlebell work, uh, that could have an impact as well. Uh, and then the last thing is just the fact that cardio itself burns calories. Uh, which can be beneficial during a bulk for some people if you're a big eater and that helps you to uh, control the size of your calorie surplus and make leaner gains. But if you're doing lots of cardio and burning lots of extra calories throughout the week and you're not properly compensating for it, then it could become a real problem because uh, you might end up significantly reducing the size of your calorie surplus or even erasing it altogether, which is obviously gonna slow down uh, your muscle building progress, or even cause you to stall out altogether. Now, uh, all that said, if it's not necessarily your goal to fully maximize muscle growth and you're going for a leaner, more athletic look, or you just like doing cardio because you enjoy it or because uh, improving your conditioning is an actual fitness goal of yours, uh, or maybe you play a sport and uh, so cardio conditioning is obviously an important part of that, then that's fine, and if you wanna go ahead and do uh, five or six days of cardio a week, uh, knowing that it might reduce your muscle building results slightly, uh, then obviously go for it. It really depends on your goals, uh, whether it's purely bodybuilding or more uh, bodybuilding slash overall fitness. Uh, but if it is your main goal to build muscle and gain strength as effectively as possible, then uh, those are the downsides that you'd be looking at when it comes to excessive cardio. Now, what would actually be considered as excessive cardio? Uh, again, assuming you're wanting to maximize muscle growth and your nutrition and your sleep is on point and you're spacing your cardio out uh, intelligently during the week, so you're not doing sprints before a leg workout uh, or going indoor climbing for two hours and then training back, uh, and you're laying out your cardio so that the overlap is minimized, I would say that two to three sessions per week is not gonna be an issue, and most people can probably get away with four uh, if for some reason they're wanting to do that much, but I would cap it at four. And uh, I think that two to three sessions during a muscle building phase is totally fine, and uh, I'd recommend using a mix of both higher and lower intensity types. You know, I wouldn't advise doing three or four high intensity cardio sessions only because it is more stressful to the body in comparison to uh, lower intensity, steadier state cardio. And I would say that not only is including some cardio during the week fine, but that it's actually a good idea in general for most people. Uh, cardio isn't 
mandatory in terms of actual muscle growth or fat loss, uh, but it can have some specific benefits there. Uh, and that's because uh, a controlled amount of cardio, uh, specifically the lower intensity types, that can actually improve muscle recovery in between workouts by uh, improving blood flow and removing waste products. Uh, and then on top of that, cardio itself can also increase insulin sensitivity for better overall uh, nutrient partitioning. Uh, and it can improve sleep uh, quality as well, uh, which is obviously important for uh, recovery and workout performance. Uh, but beyond just basic muscle growth and fat loss, doing cardio uh, is just something that will probably improve your life in general, especially if you live an otherwise mostly uh, sedentary lifestyle aside from weight training. Uh, people will say that weight training on its own is enough and gives the same benefits, but if you just compare how you feel in general, uh, between a typical hypertrophy style workout uh, that uses moderate rep ranges and longer rest periods. And you compare that with an actual cardio session uh, where you're sweating and your heart rate is elevated and you're breathing more rapidly. There's clearly a difference in how those two types of exercise affect the body both during and after it's over. So even if you're not using cardio uh, as a way of improving body composition, I would still recommend including at least a couple sessions per week just for the overall physical and mental health benefits that it will give you. Uh, cardio improves cognitive function. Uh, it does that by raising levels of BDNF, which is a protein that uh, assists in the growth of neurons. Uh, weight training does that as well, but not quite to the same degree. Uh, cardio increases serotonin and norepinephrine levels, which are two of the key feel-good neurotransmitters. And so that can have a definite impact on lowering levels of depression and anxiety over time. Uh, it can help to decrease the risk of certain diseases. And it also improves your actual cardiovascular conditioning. And that has practical day-to-day -day benefit so that you don't end up uh, you know, as a bloated bodybuilder who can't even climb a flight of stairs without getting winded. And those benefits are good enough in and of themselves, uh, but also keep in mind that they also have direct carryover to other aspects of your life as well. Because when your brain is sharper and you just feel better physically and mentally, uh, when you're just more in state throughout the day, you'll just be more effective in general uh, when it comes to things like your fitness program, uh, your work, your social life. And I've always noticed for myself that when I'm doing cardio regularly over the course of several weeks and months, uh, I currently do it three times a week, uh, I feel better, I sleep better, uh, I get more done in less time, my work quality is higher, uh, my social life is better, my life is just better in general. And the effects will vary from person to person, but that's been my experience, particularly because I work off of my laptop, so during my workday, I don't get a lot of movement in. So the caveat here is that if you do live a generally more active lifestyle, uh, so maybe you have a more physical type of job, uh, or you play sports regularly, or you just do general outdoor stuff, or even just go for regular brisk walks, things like that, then traditional cardio might not be necessary since you can probably derive most of the benefits from those things. But if you're like a lot of people out there who uh, sit at a desk for most of the day and then just do uh, you know, three or four weight training sessions per week and then are fairly immobile beyond that, I'd highly recommend that you do some cardio, at least two sessions a week, uh, ideally three, uh, because our bodies evolved to move. Being stationary all day is not natural for our physiology. And uh, beyond some of the benefits that I outlined in terms of improving muscle recovery and nutrient partitioning and sleep, it's just something that's good for your physical and mental health period. And as long as you keep it under control, so no more than four sessions per week spaced away from weight training if possible, it's not gonna negatively impact your muscle growth or your strength gains as long as your nutrition is on point. Uh, and if you are someone who does zero cardio and not much other activity besides weight training, go ahead and give it a try for a few weeks and uh, let me know how it makes you feel. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you do wanna grab a complete step-by-step -step plan that lays out a good balance between both weight training and cardio, uh, along with nutrition plans, supplement guides, and 12 weeks of one-on-one -on -one email coaching, then you can check out my Body Transformation Blueprint over at bodytransformationtruth.com or by clicking here. Uh, the link is also in the description box. If you found these tips helpful, make sure to share the video 
hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. You can also follow me on social media here if you aren't already. And the official blog is over at seannell.com. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.